Today we're looking at a nice quick number theory problem. So our goal is to determine all natural numbers A, B, and C, and then primes P and Q satisfying this equation right here. So we have P to the 2A plus Q to the 2B equals 2C plus 1 squared. Now I'd like to make a quick observation and that is that P to the A, Q to the B, and 2C plus 1 form something known as a Pythagorean triple. So in other words, it satisfies the equation x squared plus y squared equals z squared. Now there's a well-known parameterization of Pythagorean triples that we could use here to solve this problem. That being said, we're not gonna do that just because we wanna keep this from requiring something that we're not gonna prove. Okay, so let's just jump right into the solution. So I'd like to make the quick observation that the left-hand side of this equation is odd. Now that's pretty clear because we have an odd number squared. But if the left-hand side of this equation is odd, or I guess I should say the right-hand side of this equation is odd because we have an odd square, but if the right-hand side is odd, we get to, well, what I said before, which is the left-hand side of this equation is also odd. Now we have the sum of two primes over here on the left-hand side, or I should say the sum of two powers of primes. But if you are achieving an odd number with a sum of two things, that means exactly one of them is odd. So let's write that down. So exactly one of P to the 2A or Q to the 2B is odd and thus exactly one of them is also even. Now, Without loss of generality, let's maybe take q to the 2b to be equal to an even number. But then if we've got a power of something being even, well, that means that the original number is even. So we have q itself is even, but of course, there is exactly one even prime, and that is 2. So immediately we see that q is equal to 2. Okay, great. So now what I'd like to do is plug that back into the original equation. So back into the original equation, that tells us the following. So we have P to the 2A plus 2 to the B to the 2, so that's how I'm going to write 2 to the 2B, is equal to 2C plus 1 squared. Okay, nice. Now what I'll do is like solve for P to the 2A, for instance. So we can write P to the 2A is equal to 2C plus 1 squared minus 2 to the B squared. But now I want to view that as a difference of squares. So I can view it, for instance, as A squared minus B squared where perhaps my capital A is 2C plus 1 and my capital B is 2 to the B. But doing that means that I can perform a difference of squares factorization. So this is going to factor as 2C plus 1 minus 2B times 2C plus 1 plus 2B. So that's like A minus B, well, capital A minus B, times capital A plus capital B. Okay, great. But now let's see what we've got. So I'm gonna rewrite this a little bit. So just 2C plus one minus 2B times 2C plus one plus two to the B is gonna be equal to P to the 2A. Then, well, let's put a line here just to like separate from what we had above. But let's notice that the right-hand side is a power of a prime, so that means I can write that as p to the m times p to the n with 0 less than or equal to m strictly less than n, and we know that m plus n is equal to 2a. So I've just factored p to the 2a. 
and well, I'm going to indicate that I factored it in a way so that this p to the m corresponds to my 2c plus 1 minus 2b. So that's because this p to the 2a has this factorization over here. Now I'm just exhibiting that factorization over there on the right hand side. And then this p to the n is this 2c plus 1 plus 2 to the b. And I know that they're in that order where this m is less than n because notice that this pink boxed um, expression is smaller than the orange boxed expression. So let's see, that's going to give us this nice system of equations. So we've got 2c plus 1 minus 2 to the b is equal to p to the m. And likewise, we have 2c plus 1 plus 2 to the b is equal to p to the n. Now, let's observe that we can perhaps add and subtract these equations to solve for certain parts of this left-hand side. So let's maybe observe that if we add these two equations, that's gonna cancel the two to the b term, and we're gonna left, be left with four c plus two is equal to p to the m plus p to the n. I think that's pretty clear. And then likewise, we can subtract these two equations and get rid of the 2c plus 1 term. So let's see, that's going to give us what? So it'll give us 2 to the b plus 2 to the b, but that's simply 2 to the b plus 1 because it's twice 2 to the b. And then that's going to be equal to p to the n minus p to the m. Okay, great. But now since m is strictly less than n, that's what we've written over here, that means we can factor p to the m out of that right-hand side. So we've got that this is equal to p to the m times p to the n minus m minus 1. Okay, great. But now I'd like to make the following observation. I have performed a factorization of a power of 2 on the right hand side. But notice that that means that both parts on the right hand side are powers of 2. Now we said that q was even and exactly one of these was even so that also indicates that p is odd. So let's put that in there. I guess we implicitly knew that before but now we're going to explicitly write that down. So p is odd. But that means that we've got an odd factor over here on the right hand side of a power of 2. That means that p to the m is equal to 1. So let's see, we know p to the m is equal to 1 because that's the only odd number that divides into 2 to the b plus 1. But that means that m is equal to 0. Well, now let's loop that fact that m is equal to 0 back in to this equation right here, this 2 to the b plus 1 type equation. But as I do that, I like to observe that if m is 0, that means that n is equal to 2 times a. Sorry, this should have been a 2 times a, not a 2 to the a over here. Okay, so looping back into this equation, what do we see? Well, we see that 2 to the b plus 1 is equal to p to the 2a minus 1. But now we can likewise factor that as a difference of squares because that's p to the a squared minus 1 squared. So that's going to factor as p to the a minus 1 times p to the a plus 1. Okay, great. But now I'd like to observe the following. I've got another factorization of powers of 2. So that means I factor that as 2 powers of 2. Now in this case they're both even, so we can't say that one of them is equal to 1. But that means the following. We have p to the a minus 1 is equal to, perhaps we'd call it 2 to the x, and we have p to the b um, or sorry, p to the a plus 1 is equal to 2 to the y. And here we have what? We have x is less than y and x plus y is equal to b plus 1. So we have that information.
Okay, so, well, we've got a lot of moving parts here, but I'd like to make a quick summary at the top of the next board, and we'll see where we can take it. Thanks for sticking around this long into the video. If you're enjoying it, make sure and hit the thumbs up. And if you're not yet subscribed, consider subscribing. It really helps us out. Okay, so we did a lot of calculations and arguments so far, and we ended up with a couple of facts. So first of all, we know that p to the a minus 1 is equal to 2 to the x. It's a power of 2. And then p to the a plus 1 is equal to 2 to the y, another power of 2. We also know that x plus y is b plus 1, and x and y are ordered like this. So x is bigger than or equal to 0, and y is bigger than x. Furthermore, we had this other equation, which we kind of put to the side for a while, but I'm going to recall that we had 4c plus 2 is equal to p to the 2a plus 1. Now, on the last board, we had it written as p to the a or sorry, p to the m plus p to the n, but we determined what m and n were already. Okay, so now we're gonna use a similar trick to what we did before on this first green box. We're gonna solve for p to the a, if you will. So we're gonna do that by adding these two equations. So let's observe if we add these two equations, we get two times p to the a, is equal to 2 to the y plus 2 to the x. Now what I can do is I can factor a 2 to the x out because we know that x is less than y by our previous argument. So now we've got this is equal to 2 to the x times 2 to the y minus x plus 1. So we've got uh, some sort of situation like this. But now I'd like to make the following observation. I can divide both sides by 2. And immediately we know that dividing both sides by 2 will imply that this x is bigger than or equal to 1 because there's our factor of x right there. Okay, so let's see. Dividing both sides by 2 will give us p to the a is equal to 2 to the x minus 1 times 2 to the y minus x plus 1. Okay, great. I guess I maybe should have mentioned that we know that this component right here is odd because y is strictly bigger than x. We know y is strictly bigger than x because this term right here is strictly bigger than this term. So that means if this is odd, that means that this 2 to the x has to be even. So when we perform that division by 2, we know it's like factoring out of that term, if you will. Okay, great. Now we know from that orange box up there that p is odd. Now here we've got a power of 2 is dividing into an odd number, but the only power of 2 that divides into an odd number is 2 to the 0. But that means that x minus 1 is 0. In other words, x is equal to 1. Okay, so now looping that back into our equation up there, that gives us p to the a is equal to 2 to the y minus 1 plus 1. But then taking a step back, you'll notice that perhaps we shouldn't have looped that back into the equation we had. Maybe we should put it back into one of these equations we like started with. And in fact, if we do that, we'll have the following. So I'll just say that blue arrow is coming from this equation right here. We have p to the a minus 1 is equal to 2 to the 1 because we know x is equal to 1. So I think everything is collapsing. So let's observe that p to the a is equal to 3. But 3 itself is a prime, which tells us that p is equal to 3 and a is equal to 1. Okay, so that's the situation we're at at the moment. So what do we know so far? We know that q is equal to 2, we know that p is equal to 3, and we know that a is equal to 1. Now let's loop it back into this equation right here, this 4c plus 2 is equal to p to the 2a plus 1. So let's see. We also have the following. 4c plus 2 is equal to, well, what is that going to be? That's going to be 3 squared plus 1 from all the stuff that we've determined. In other words, it's going to be 10. 
But of course, if 4C plus 2 is 10, that pretty quickly tells us that C is equal to 2. Okay, so let's put a magenta box around that. I guess the magenta box are the final values that we know for the things that we're trying to determine. Okay, great. And now let's plug everything back into the very original problem over here. And let's observe into the original problem, we have three squared, that's this p to the two a, plus four to the b. So remember q is two, so we've got four to the b, I think that's pretty clear, is equal to, so that's gonna be five squared over here, because if you replace c with two, you'll get that that is five. But now we're pretty much home free. That tells us that four to the b is 16. In other words, that tells us that b is two. Okay, so let's put our final box here and take a step back and observe that we've completely determined that A is one, B is two, C is two, P is three, and Q is two. And I guess there's some symmetry between P and Q because they're playing similar roles over here. And that symmetry is the same for A and B. So we actually get another pair of solutions where you simultaneously switch P and Q and A and B. And that's a good place to stop.